please welcome Undersecretary of Commerce for Minority Business Development, Donald Crevins. Good afternoon. All right, come on now, you guys can do better than that. Good afternoon. It's hard competing with lunch, but I will try to do so. It is so good to be here. First of all, let me just uh, thank you for the opportunity to join you. I want to thank Chris James and the National Center for American Indian Enterprise Development for inviting me to be with you here today in fabulous Las Vegas. I also want to thank Chris and the Enterprise Development Center for working tirelessly to empower indigenous and native entrepreneurs to ensure that your voices are heard uh, at every level of government. I also want to recognize my colleagues from the federal government that I know have briefed you and talked to you. Um, I hope that our presence here with you today, ladies and gentlemen, and throughout this conference is, is, is indicative of the commitment of the Biden-Harris administration um, to making sure that all Americans have an opportunity to succeed uh, in our great country. I appreciate the work that you all do because it's so closely tied to the work that I do at the Department of Commerce, especially at the Minority Business Development Agency. For over five decades, our organizations have shared a common mission and a common vision to empower indigenous and native communities and businesses and minority entrepreneurs. We have grown together, we have struggled together, and we have succeeded together. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you today that there is a unique opportunity before us, an opportunity to create an equitable economy and to empower indigenous and native American communities and businesses so that you can create your own success, so that you can continue uplifting your tribes and your communities as is your right. As Chris always says, and I, and I repeat his words, this is a new dawn for Indian country. And ladies and gentlemen, it's about damn time. I know you've heard this before, but I want you all to know that I am committed. The Minority Business Development Agency is committed. The Department of Commerce is committed to breaking down the barriers that stand between your communities, your businesses, your tribes, and your prosperity. And I understand, we understand, the minority business community is not a monolith. We are all not exactly the same. Not all people of color face the same trials. Not all businesses of color face the same trials and tribulations. And that's especially true for indigenous and native communities as well. What I understand is not all of you face the same problems and barriers, but I and my agency have to be sophisticated enough and intentional enough to help meet you where you are. What is a challenge for the Tunica Biloxi may not be the same challenge for the Cherokee Nation. Bottom line is your tribes understand what your businesses need much better than anyone else. And that needs to not only be respected, but also be embraced. I want you to know that you can count on me, you can count on the Minority Business Development Agency to be your voice in the federal government. That is why the agency exists. For those of you who may not be as familiar with the Minority Business Development Agency, let me give you just a brief history. We were created in 1969 at the end of the civil rights movement by then President Nixon. If you recall, or if you've learned your history, you'll know that at the end of the civil rights movement, civil rights leaders were talking about not only social justice and civil rights, but they were also talking about economic rights and economic justice. And as a result, the Minority Business Development Agency was created. And for 50 years, the MBDA has been your voice, the minority business enterprise voice throughout government. However, we were still just a temporary agency. We were a presidential appointed agency by President Nixon. That meant that our agency was temporary by nature. So because of that, we were never assured of any certainty that our agency would be there from year to year or administration to administration. But despite this uncertainty, we continue to make a change in America. Year after year, 
We help minority business enterprises secure billions of dollars of capital, as well as billions of dollars in contracts. And we did that as a temporary agency. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that we are temporary no more. In 2021, as a result of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, we became, for the first time in our nation's history, a permanent agency. So not only not, now we not only have the voice, we've got the tools, we've got the resources. We're not only sitting, we're no longer sitting at the kiddie table. We're no longer sitting in a folding chair. We are at the table and we are setting the menu. And I want you to know, and I want you to believe, you are at the table seated right next beside me. And it's not just me. You have a voice at the Department of Commerce. The Office of Native American Business Center's director chair was vacant for over a decade until last year when Ms. Sean Desheen, who many of you know well, was appointed to lead the office. It's that representation that has helped prioritize regulator control in tribal jurisdictions. It has helped the Department of Commerce award over a billion dollars to tribal jurisdictions. And so it has led, and it has also led to $500 million to support long-term sustainable investments in critical issues from wastewater infrastructure to job training. That is what a seat at the table can mean for all of us. My promise to you is that as the leader of the Minority Business Development Agency, you will be a priority. We will find solutions for Native American owned businesses unique to your circumstances. We will support your tribal sovereignty and your right to self-determination. That's why I took a 7.30 flight this morning after returning from Kenya this weekend, because I wanted you to know you are a priority to me and we are here to help you. The backbone of our agency or our 88 equities, our business centers, our specialty centers, I know many of our operators are here in this room with us today. Those centers and those grant programs are located in 36 states, including Puerto Rico and the District of Columbia. They have programs that can help you access capital, access contracts, and expand your networks. Part of our network is 13 American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian projects whose sole mission is to serve indigenous and native owned businesses. What is unique about these 13 centers is that they are run by people who look like you. They are run by indigenous organizations that understand the unique challenges and needs of the native and indigenous communities. And our centers produce results. Like one of our operators, the Four Winds Diversified Project, who had helped Tamara Begay and her company, Indigenous Design Studio and Architecture, make their mark for the Navajo Nation as the only architecture firm in the world with 100% indigenous staff. That's great. And there's, there's David Beaver, the CEO of Titan Facility Services and a member of the Winnebago tribe. MBDA has helped his make, make his mark as a major player in government contracting in just a few short years. It's clear, ladies and gentlemen, our, our centers, our equities, they get results. And that includes the National Center for American Indian Enterprise Development, who operates two of our centers, one which serves tribal businesses across the eastern seaboard among 27 states. And they also operate our Arizona Export Center, helping minority businesses of all makes and model access global markets. MBDA is fortunate to have these partners. And we're fortunate to partner with American Indian Business Organization, uh, the largest American Indian business organization in the nation, running two of our centers. And so we're proud of our partnerships. We're proud of our work. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to just say one thing in closing. We, are, we will be expanding our network to provide more resources to all of you in this year to come. I'm happy to announce that our network is going to set up an additional 30 to 40 centers incubators, accelerators as part of our capital readiness program. This $100 million program will provide technical assistance and, and business support services to minority and other underserved 
entrepreneurs, including those in rural and tribal lands. Our goal is to make sure that everyone in this room has an opportunity to participate in this infrastructure investment that our president and vice president in this administration has made uh, in our communities. Native Americans don't want to just enjoy electric vehicles, they want to design and build them. They don't want to just drive on nice streets and good bridges, they want to design and build those bridges and those streets. And so we want to make sure that we have a place and, and, and success in doing that. Brothers and sisters, in closing, I'll say this is how we will change the system. This is how we're going to create long-term sustainable growth in our country. Because we know that tribal businesses have long succeeded and made invaluable contributions to this nation despite centuries of injustice and prejudice. It is our duty to ensure that your talent, your hard work, are not being held back by a broken system. Now, I know this is a bold mission. It's not going to be easy. Change is never easy, but we're going to get the job done. And we're going to create a system that supports your sovereignty and your economic freedom because it's what your tribes deserve and it's what your businesses deserve. My message to all of you is very simple, ladies and gentlemen. Help is no longer just on the way. Help is here and it's here to stay with the Minority Business Development Agency. Thank you so much and God bless each and every one of you.